So let's say you mess up your complaint or any of your other pleadings. The rules allow you to make amendments, but before we get into those rules and discuss the intricacies of them, we first have to define what a pleading is. A pleading is not simply anything you file with the court. Rather, a pleading is, one, a complaint, two, an answer, three, a third-party complaint pursuant to Rule 14. We'll discuss that later when we get to Joinder. Four, an answer to a counterclaim, cross-claim, or third-party complaint, and we'll discuss what all of those are later. And five, a court-ordered reply to an answer. A court order reply to an answer, it's very rare that you have that, but if you do, that, that would be a pleading. You can, if, if you can make amendments to other documents, by the way, in many cases, but those are governed by different rules. You can amend your pleadings once for free, without permission from, the other, from any other party or from the court. That is, you can do it entirely on your own, unilaterally, within 21 days of serving the original. If the pleading is one that must be responded to, such as a complaint, the defendant has to respond to your complaint, you have, a, you have up to 21 days after the response to make an amendment. Of course, the other side will get the opportunity to, opportunity to respond to your amended pleading. To illustrate, if you file, you file your first complaint on January 1, you have until January 22, that is 21 days after the filing, to make an amendment. Let's say the defendant files an answer on January 10. That means you'll have until January 31 to file your amendment. After you, after you amend your pleading, the defendant, the, if you amend your complaint in this case, the defendant will have 14 days, not the usual 21, to respond to your amended complaint. Once your 21-day window for amendment has passed, or if you've already used your one free amendment, you can still amend your pleadings basically as many times as you want, but you first need to ask the other side for permission. Basically, what you do is show them what you want to amend, explain what the issues are, and if they say yes, you're good to go. You just inform the court that, that the other side consented, file your amendment, and that's it. If the other side said no, then you have to ask for leave from the court. The court will generally say yes, unless one, the amendment would prejudice the other side, perhaps because of excessive delay between the filing and the amendment, or because it's close to a deadline, such as the trial is looming in a couple of weeks. Two, the amendment will not survive legal scrutiny. Basically, it's frivolous. If you want to amend your complaint to add a defendant who has a lot of money, but don't change the facts to explain why this new defendant is relevant to your claim at all, well, the amendment is obviously frivolous. The court's just not going to let that in. In addition, be, out on, the, be on the lookout for amendments that change the parties in diversity cases. An amendment that adds a party might destroy diversity jurisdiction, thus ending the case. Typically, if the proceeding has been going on for some time prior to the proposed amendment, the court will disallow a jurisdiction-destroying amendment. It would see, be seen as prejudicial to the other side that wants the case to continue. In other words, if you, have a, if you have an amendment that's going to require court approval, and the amendment is going to destroy jurisdiction, the court, more likely than not, is going to say, no, sorry, you can't do that. But if the court allows it, you can amend your pleadings at any time. Amendments can be made to fix mistakes and omissions, or even to add or remove parties, or even to make new allegations and new claims. Now, the effect of the amended pleading is to entirely, entirely void the prior pleading. The original complaint, for example, has no effect whatsoever. It's gone. Now, let's say you want to make your amend amendment after the statute of limitations has run. If you were to file the complaint for the first time now, you would be kicked out of court for being late. The rules do something interesting. They call for a relation back to the prior complaint, to the prior pleading. That means the amended pleading will relate back to the prior pleading for the purposes of date, even though the prior pleading has been rendered void. The prior pleading does no longer exist after the amendment. After the amendment, nevertheless, the new pleading will be given the date of the prior pleading. Relation back is available only when the new claim or defense arises from the same conduct, transaction, or occurrence as set out in the original pleading. That means if you want to add something completely different, the amendment will not relate back to the original filing and you'll be stuck with the new date. Now that's with new claims or defenses. What if you want to add a new party after the statute of limitations has run? And here the rules are a bit more strict and they show their true fairness colors. On one hand, we want to allow the, 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 the plaintiff to correct his honest mistakes and to make a, a full-fledged uh, attempt at litigation. On the other hand, we want to set potential defendants free at some point. That is, after all, the purpose of the statute of limitations rules. The potential defendant who has not yet been sued has the right to assume after the statute of, statute of limitations has run that he will not be subject to a suit on that issue and can go on with his life. In order to accommodate both, accommodate both of these interests, 
The rules say that a new party can be added if one, he received notice of the suit within 120 days after the complaint was filed, and two, he knew or should have known that the only reason he was not named in the original complaint was mistaken identity or some other error. That is, he knew that he should have been on the first complaint, but wasn't for some, some mistake that will likely be found out later. If both are present, if he knew within 120 days of filing and knew that he should have been named, we will assume that he's been preparing and is ready to go upon receiving the amended complaint, even if it's technically not true, even if he wasn't preparing. We're going to assume that he was for the purposes of law and allow the plaintiff to add him to, to, add him to the case at this point, because he should not be surprised when he finds out later that he's been added to the case. Some states have different rules relating to relation back. Now, it doesn't really matter here. You're not going to come up with, uh, well, it does matter. The, the state rules matter, and I'll explain why. But you're not going to come up to the Erie Doctrine. It's not going to be relevant. And the reason is because the federal rules directly incorporate the local state rules. If the state rules are more lenient than the federal rules with regard to relation back, the state rules apply. If the federal rules are more lenient, on the other hand, the federal rules apply. You always go with the more lenient rule, and that's actually what it says within federal law, irrespective of the Erie Doctrine. The more lenient rules will govern, will govern in relation back cases.